Good evening. Welcome, everyone, to Trinity Temple. We'd like to welcome you this evening to the Gay, Lesbian, Bisexual, Transgender, Transgender Vigil for Youth and ask that you all come here with an open mind and an open heart and that you come in perfect love and perfect trust, as we say in our faith. In our faith, we teach that balance is very, very important. Uh, we worship both a god and a goddess. We work with the divine feminine and the divine masculine. And we feel that we're each, everything is filled with both aspects of nature, uh, light and dark, male and female, if you will. And you have to learn to work with both aspects of yourself. You have to learn to embrace both aspects of yourself. We would also like to begin with a brief prayer for peace. I would ask everyone to take a deep breath and stand up. Lead us from the unreal to the real. Lead us from the darkness to the light. Lead us from death to immortality. Peace be with you all. May there be peace in the celestial regions. May there be peace here on earth. May the waters be always appeasing. May herbs be wholesome, and may trees and plants bring peace to all. May all the beneficent beings of the universe bring peace to us, and may the law of the God and the Goddess propagate peace throughout the world. May all things be a source of peace and inspiration to us, and may the peace itself bestow peace on all. And may that peace come to each and every one of us in the ways that we need the most, here and ever after. Amen. We ask the blessings of the God. We ask the blessings of the Goddess. The blessings of the ancestors of all of those assembled. And we ask for the blessings of the elements of nature. So more to this is the call to worship. I sought out deity, and deity answered me. I am here. I cried out to the Almighty, and the Almighty answered me. I am here. I said, Do not leave me alone, for I am afraid. I am here. I said, I am overwhelmed and frightened and fearful. I do not know what I can do, and I fear what I am. I am here. Source of our strength, bearer of our hope, gather with us now. Wrap your unending presence around us. You are here to grieve with us, to rage with us, to hurt with us. You are here to quiet our fears and calm our hearts, to give us hope and renew our strength and community. Let us worship with you. At this point, I'm going to ask Lucille Harper to lead us in singing. In this and in truth service, we are an army strong. Put on the belt of truth now. Its power shall not cease. The breastplate of justice, the marching boots of peace, the helmet of our hope, and keep the faith your shield, and blazing sword of justice, that none shall make us yield. The first reading is taken out of the ancient tales of the Arabian Nights, which most of you have either read or heard of over the years, I'm sure. And I selected this particular... Oh, please say. It's been a few years since I did this. I selected this particular uh, reading because what got us started on this path was that I went down to the first vigil, the first annual vigil in New York City for um, Ayas Marhoni and Mahmoud Asghari, who the Iranian government hung to death after torturing for 14 months because they were gay. 
when the Iranian government captured them, the younger of them was 14, the older was 16. They waited till the oldest one was exactly 18 to execute them. They were shocked when the Western world reacted badly to this. And they began to attempt to find ways around what they had done. And initially they said, well, the fact they were gay was incidental. They drank alcohol. The Western world did not get any better about the situation. Sweden cut off a right of extradition. Holland cut off right of extradition. Germany was debating it in the parliament. And they suddenly popped up with the explanation of, well, really, really, it was about rape. They never produced a victim, or even the name of the victim. But this, of course, you recognize, and you'll see in one of the later readings, as one of the old tricks when you've done something like this and you're caught at it. That was always true. It was true in Nazi Germany before the Nazis had complete power. When someone would interrupt the brown church, when they were beating someone up, the brown church would say, oh, they were raping an old woman over there. In the Deep South, when they wanted to lynch African American men after the Civil War, they didn't just lynch them. They said, oh, they were raping a white woman, or they were looking at a white woman wrong. It's the classic excuse. So this first reading from the Arabian Nights um, it relates to uh, the way things were in about 950 A.D. in Arabia. Now, you've got to imagine this being read by this queen, as you know, the 1001 Tales of an Arabian Night, with the stories that a queen who was captive to a very evil caliph kept herself alive by reading to him. This is one of them, directly translated in 1934. We have the second reading which is going to be read by uh, spiritual leader Joanne McFadden from the Albany Spiritual Center. Good evening. This is entitled, Iranian Sources Question Rape Charges and Teen Executions. As worldwide protests are taking place against the death penalty and criminalization of homosexuality in Iran in the wake of the hanging of two teenage males in the Iranian city of Mashhad, New information is coming in from that country casting serious doubt on the validity of the rape charges the government there used to justify the death sentences. August 11th has been designated as the day for a series of coordinated demonstrations in France, Ireland, the United Kingdom, and elsewhere to protest the hanging of, hangings of Ayaz Marhoni. Did I say that right? Yeah. 18 and Mahmoud Asghari, 16, according to press reports. On the controversy surrounding official claims that the executed youths had sexually assaulted a 13-year-old boy, Afdir Jama, editor of Huriyat, an e-zine for queer Muslims, said his contacts in Iran affirmed that the two youths hung in Mashhad were lovers. The first day I found out, I called my Iranian contacts from Huriya, Jama said. All agreed on the fact that these boys were murdered for being queer. One of my contacts, who has been to gay parties in Mashhad, swears the boys were long-term lovers, and another source told me one of the boys' family members outed the couple. We'd like to read a statement from Amy Whitman, the co-chair of the board of directors of the Gay, Lesbian, and Straight Education Network. She was unable to be here this evening due to illness and is still recovering. To Trinity Temple, the Temple of Astral Light, and to those assembled at this vigil, the Board of Directors of the Gay, Lesbian, and Straight Education Network, New York Capital Region, would like to thank you all very much for joining with us to take a stand to end the very serious problem of anti-LGBT bullying and harassment in America's schools. We are grateful to you for joining us in our vision of a world in which every child learns to respect and accept all people, regardless of sexual orientation or gender identity <coughs> expression. Dr. Robert Kinjemi, a colleague of mine, is about to read the third reading. This is a fairly long reading from Max Gordon. It's by Max Gordon of the Democratic Underground, December 7, 2004, it was written. There is a 13-year-old boy in America who walks to school this morning. He believes he is a pervert 
because he is sexually attracted to a boy in his class. Undressing in the locker room for Jim, he is terrified he will get an erection or his friends will notice him staring at the other boys and call him a homo. Jesus stands with all of us, he, but he especially knows what it's like to be an innocent, to be violated and murdered for telling the truth, to face a violent mob and to be alone. And for Christ's sake, please stop dragging Jesus into it. Hasn't that poor man been through enough? Whether we believe he was the Savior or not, I think we probably all agree that he was a pretty nice guy that loved all kinds of people and never meant to hurt anyone. If he were alive to see this land today, I don't think he'd claim it. We're going to sing an old spiritual favorite, We Shall Overcome. And I'm going to ask Lucille if she'll actually come up to the mic for this one. Because this is one of my favorite songs, and I can't read this one. I have to <laughs> sing quietly, or you'll all know how bad I am. <laughs> he was very good. We shall me to help with this evening, evening's event, I was pleased to say yes. And then, as is my usual want, I started thinking. And thinking is a danger that comes with my vocation. <laughs> and I say a danger because it can often lead us down many unusual paths. In fact, when you're working in any position, in any part of any major university, you never know where a bout of thinking will lead you. Why do we, including those of us here who are straight, which is most of us, and those of us here who are not straight, believe that though that issue is important, all other people should be respected, while an entire other group of people do not believe that anyone who does not think as they do should be respected? Why do they feel that the very issue of justice being offered to gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgendered, and questioning teens is a threat to them personally? A life or death struggle, which if they lose, will ultimately not only destroy them, but will destroy the world as they see it. Why, on a practical level, do they routinely attempt to destroy those who are different from them, even when those who are different from them do nothing to harm them. We thus obey the prime structure of every faith, which is to love one another, to care about one another, to help one another, to do unto others not as they have done to you, but as you would have them do to you. We must simply manifest compassion, devotion, acceptance, and forgiveness, even to those who do not accept us, those who do not forgive us, and those who have no compassion for us. To make love is to make justice. As advocates and activists for justice know, loving involves struggle, resistance, and risk. People working today on behalf of women, blacks, lesbians, and gay men, 
the aging, the poor, in this country and elsewhere, know that making justice is not a warm, fuzzy experience. I think also that sexual lovers and good friends know that the most compelling relationships demand hard work, patience, and a willingness to endure tensions and anxieties in creating mutually empowering bonds. And I'm personally going to add something else that Jonathan and I are very good at. I think that's why we've done this well. Communication. Let us release our hatreds, our grudges, our worries, and our fears. Gay and straight together, let us bond, let us love one another and those beyond ourselves, for in so doing, we are creating justice, not only for gay, bisexual, and transgender teens, and lesbian teens, but also for adults, for mothers with children, for the aged, for Americans, for really everyone. In the name of the eternal, the love, and the spirit that binds us as in one. Call upon the blessings of the divine masculine. We call upon the blessings of God. We call upon the blessings of goddess. The merging of the divine masculine and the divine feminine is the all of the universe. In this light that burns eternally within our hearts, both polarities exist. Through all of us, may this light ever grow. Through all of us, may justice burn as brightly within the world as it does within our hearts. This is our will. So, so, so may be. Know that you can attain that. You do have the courage of your conviction. You can love yourself and others, and others will love you in return. Spirits of the East, spirits of air, thought, and communication, be with us and help us to speak truth to power. Let our words of truth and love be heard further and wider than words of propaganda and hatred. Hail and welcome! Hail and welcome! Wicca focuses very, very much on balance, on the duality of nature. There's a goddess and a god, a yin and a yang, as there is night, so is the day. And so we worship that within us, which is the divine feminine and the divine masculine. And we feel that all people have both aspects within themselves. Some of us may identify more with one aspect or another. In this incarnation, in this lifetime, I am physically a male. That doesn't mean I don't have a very well-developed feminine side. Some people are female, who have a very well-developed masculine side. When we began the ritual, you may notice that we did what we refer to as cast the serpent. Using this energy that is ever-present and that we can draw through us and channel. What that means is we actually cast Down the 
those who pass on unjustly because of ignorance, intolerance, and hatred, their families, the loved ones that were left behind, robbed of their children, of their brothers, of their sisters. Healing goes out now to those families and to the ones who have moved on to Summerland. May they go in peace. May their hearts be healed. May the cruelty be forgotten. And may they be lifted into the arms of Goddess and God. May they be healed. May they be healed. So many Peace is flowing. 